All right, guys. The um, relaunch after our winter storms uh, of our lectures is uh, is upon us. My hope is over the weekend to be able to uh, update some of the things we're doing. Um, one of the things that I wanted to come back to in a very brief lecture is in those introductory notes on worldview. Every class that we cover has to cover the worldview of not only the author, i.e. in this case Paul, uh, but also the worldview that we deal with. Because again, if scripture is by level, meaning it applies uh, to the period of time it was written and to our period of time, then um, the Apostle Paul had to deal with not only the gospel's antagonists, but also counterfeit gospels. Uh, people that were coming up alongside of the preaching of the gospel um, and pretending, purporting, to, um, to be speaking for Christ. And so, in your notes at the bottom of the page where uh, we deal with the conspiracy theories and the people who um, preach counterfeit gospels, there is a, a little brief section called Mathematics of the Cults. It's not original with me in any way. It actually goes back to the days of Ravi Zacharias, Josh McDowell. Back when um, many of our parents were studying Usually on a Sunday night in a discipleship training seminar, they would learn something about the cults. And back then, cults were basically divided into um, science, Scientology, atheism, agnosticism, uh, etc. So how do you know if a particular group is preaching the gospel or not? How, how do you know whether it's legit as far as doctrine is concerned or if it's in fact a counterfeit and a cult a real simple quick way that you can teach this to anyone is what we call the mathematics of the cults I would encourage you to do this in your pulpit and to do it to your youth group and to do it consistently and constantly in front of your people but because it, it puts their radar up it shows discernment uh, and it's very simple. It's four steps. The mathematics of the cults is add, subtract, multiply, and divide. When they add to the books of the Bible, subtract to Christ's full divinity or full humanity, multiply steps to salvation, or divide the body of Christ, that's how you answer the question if something is a cult. It's the fastest way to do it. Number one, um, add to the books of the Bible. One of the ways to know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that something is cultic is, do they have other books that they put on the same level as uh, the 66 books of the canon, the Old Testament and the New Testament? Sometimes it's their interpretation. For instance, um, Mary Baker Eddy. You can't read the Bible in Christian science unless you're reading alongside of it her interpretation. Um, sometimes it's adding a book entirely, like the Book of Mormon, Pearl of a Great Price, Doctrines and the Covenants uh, for the Mormons. Sometimes it's adding their translation, where, like with the Jehovah's Witnesses and what we call the Green Phantom, their own translation, supposedly, of the Bible. And they say, you, you know, you're obviously not reading the real Bible if you're not reading their translation. If somebody puts their book on the same level of scripture, cult. Number two, subtract. Um, any group that subtracts to Jesus Christ being fully human and fully divine, the God-man, the, the big word we use for that is hypostatic nature, but the fact that he was 100% human as if not divine and yet 100% divine as if not human, and he was both at the same time. He was both the bread of life and he hungered. Any group that says that he cannot be both, or is not both, that he, uh, even in some place where they say he becomes God, say at the baptism, and then stops being God at, um, say, at the crucifixion, when he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's a cult. See, if he wasn't God, he couldn't offer the perfect sacrifice. If he wasn't man, he didn't dwell among us. John 1, 1 through 14. Now let's look, add, subtract, multiply. 
means to salvation. Anybody that says anything more than grace by faith, that it's unearned, given to you without merit, you got to earn your way in, well, that's a religion. That's not Christianity. Every group says you got to earn your way in. Only in Christianity do we say that you can't, that you in fact have to admit you can't, which is repentance. Finally, any group that divides the body of Christ, now this is a hard one to hear, but let's see if we can unpack this. There are certain groups that become a cult because they believe that unless you are their denomination or their church or their movement, that you're not going to heaven then they're dividing the body of Christ. Um, the classic Church of Christ. Churches of Christ, like Max Lucado was back in the day, they believe, one, you have to be baptized to be saved, and number two, that you have to be baptized in their church or you're not saved. Catholic Church. The Catholic Church says, and has said since the days of the Cyprian, the Bishop of Carthage, you cannot have God as Father, and not have the Holy Roman Catholic Church as your mother. If somebody asks me, do you believe that the Greek Orthodox are saved? Um, another group that believes that. Well, they don't believe I'm saved. So we have a problem, don't we? If I can look you in the eye and say, I will never, I will never uh, go to confession. I will never be baptized in the Catholic Church. Am I going to heaven? Yes or no? I'm, not, I'm never going to be baptized in a uh, Catholic Church or only be buried in a Catholic church cemetery, will, will I go to heaven? That's a quick definition, isn't it? If you're born again, you're a brother in Christ and a sister in Christ. You may not be my denomination, but you are in my family. It's pretty simple. Any group that adds books, subtracts from the nature of Christ, multiplies the way to salvation except by grace, or divides the body of Christ in that they think they're the only ones in, that's a cult. For this lecture, all you need to do is either text me or email me at ecanner at abu.edu and say math. See you at the next lecture.